Hello and welcome to the first part of this course. So if you are looking for a job opportunity in the core field or in the IT field, then you are at the right place because Python is one of the biggest requirement of the current situation. And uh, this course is intended in giving you the fundamental idea of Python. So if you don't know anything about coding, if you don't know anything about Python, then you are at the right place because we are starting from the very basics. So Python introduction part one. Yeah, so what is Python? Let me just start with the very introduction. Uh, and here I have picked some real life examples so that, you know, not just giving you some uh, programming based language ideas, but just giving you some examples or making you understand concepts with the help of some real life examples. So Python is a programming language that is in interpreted, it is object oriented and it is considered to be high level too. So uh, what is an interpreted language? Let's first have a look on that. And also we'll be seeing what is an object oriented. It is a high level language. Uh, there is high level languages and there is machine level languages. A machine level languages means ones and zeros. High level language means uh, while looking at the code, the humans can understand what is the flow of the course that uh, of the code that kind of languages are called high level languages now we will see what is interpreted and what is object oriented in detail in the next slide but just let me just tell you it is a interpreted language and also it is an object oriented language and another important thing it is one of the easiest yet most powerful programming languages that is Currently, it is the biggest requirement of all the industries, so not just software industry, in the core field also. If you see uh, in electronics-based core companies and all, there is a lot of requirement of Python, uh, you know, programmers. Okay, so first let us see what is a uh, interpreted language. But before telling you what is an interpreted language, I want to tell you that the programming languages can be classified as a combined language and an interpreted. So it can be a combined language or it can be a interpreted language. Now a combined language is a programming language that is generally compiled and is not interpreted. Okay. So uh, if you take an example like C or C++, these are examples you can see on the screen C, C++, Go, COBOL, these are examples of combined languages. So these languages while compiling, it will be in the form of machine code and it is ready to run. Okay, so once they are compiled and it is expressed into instructions of the target machine and it will be in the form of machine code that humans cannot understand and it is ready to run in any platform. That is a compiled language. Okay, now talking about an interpreted language, an interpreted language just like Python is a programming language that is generally interpreted without compiling the program into machine instructions. So we are not converting them into machine instructions. Okay, it is one of the, uh, it is one where the instructions are not directly executed by the target machine, but it is instead read and executed by some other program. So it is interpreted. Okay, so examples are Python, PHP, Ruby. So the interpreter languages, they are interpreted and it is, uh, when it is ready to run, it is getting interpreted in the virtual machine and then it is converted to machine code. Okay. Now let us take a very real life example so that you will understand what is the difference between a combined language. You will understand what is a, uh, you know, combined language and what is a interpreted language and what is the difference between these two because the programming languages can be classified as it can be either compiled version or it can be either interpreted. Now imagine that you have a hummus recipe that you want to make, okay, but it is written in an ancient Greek language. There are two ways uh, for a non-ancient Greek speaker, if it is not, if you are not a Greek speaker, if you don't know uh, ancient Greek language, you can do the uh, understanding in two ways. Okay, the first one is, if someone has already translated to English, that is, someone has already translated with the recipe to English, uh, you could read the English version of the recipe and make the hummus. So you can think of this as a compiled version of a programming language. Okay, means it is already converted into a machine language so that it is easy for you to run. So you don't need any help there because it is already converted into a machine language. 
and it is compiled version and you, ju you just have to read the English version. Okay. So, it was originally in the Greek language but somebody has already converted that into an English version. So, it is ready to read and execute. Okay. So, this you can think of a compiled programming language. Now, the second way is that, uh, the second way is if you have a friend who knows uh, ancient Greek. So, the recipe is written in ancient Greek and you have a friend who knows an ancient Greek language. So, when you are ready to make hummus, your friend sit uh, next to you and translate the recipe in English line by line. In this case, your friend is an interpreter, okay, for the interpreted version of the recipe. So, this is the difference. Now, you will, uh, will be able to understand what is a compiled language, what is an interpreted language with a very real life example. So, the first one in which already it is converted into English language. So, you just have to read. The second one, you call the interpreter. Whenever you are ready to make the recipe, at that time, that person reads line by line and interprets every line for you. So, this type of a language is called an interpreted language. The previous version, the other version is called a combined language. Okay. So, in a combined language, already it has been converted to a machine uh, language version, which is ready to be executed and ready to be run. Now, in the case of Python, which is an interpreted language, you are doing it at the time of execution. Okay. So, this is the difference between a compiled language and an interpreted language. Now, talking about coming back to our topic, Python is, a, is an interpreted language. Okay. Now, let's talk about the programming uh, other, you know, other concept which is called object oriented programming languages. There is a lot of object oriented programming languages like Java, uh, various other languages are there. Now, what is an object oriented programming language or an OOPS concept? Object oriented programming languages are languages that depend on the concept of objects which contain data and code. Object means it consists of both data and code. Here, data is in the form of attributes or properties, and code is in the form of methods. So, the, uh, the executable part is in the form of methods or procedures or functions, we can say simply. And the data we generally declare as attributes or variables or properties. Okay. So, just understand in an object oriented programming language, there is uh, code and also data. Data and code is there. Data will be like the variables that we declare or the fields the attributes and the properties these are like the data and the code is like the functions that we define inside the in the language okay so this is the two important things to be understood let's go back to the slide and let's see again what is a python python is a programming language python is interpreted language it is object oriented and it is high level too High level language and machine level, level languages. Like in a machine level language, when you look into the code, when somebody writes the code and when you look into the code, you don't understand anything. But for example, in the case of a Java or in the case of Python, if you look, you barely, uh, I mean, you can uh, you understand what what is the flow and what is happening here. You are declaring a variable. You can understand that kind of languages are called high level languages. Okay. Now, it is very easy to be, uh, you know, uh, to easy to learn. It is one of the easiest languages and it's the most commonly used languages now. Python, if you are a beginner, actually we are discussing that in the next slide. So, if you are a beginner, uh, mostly Python is the first language introduced in the beginning of a, uh, in the beginning time of a programmer. Like, for example, if you are taking a whole course on you know, a variety of programming languages, probably Python will be the first one that you learn because Python is very easy to learn. Python is very much useful. It is one of the highly, you know, uh, demanding or it has one of the highest demands currently and it is easy to learn. So, Python is a very competitive programming language. Uh, it is used for uh, programming, competitive programming, web development, creating software. Is, Due to the easiest syntax, it is very much recommended to the beginners. As I said, if you are learning like a variety of languages, probably Python will be the first language uh, that you will be learning in a, like a course or something. So, Python is very, very easy to learn. Okay. Its demand is growing in a very rapid pace due to the very vast use in the case of 
you know modern technology fields like data science machine learning a lot of artificial intelligence programs uh, softwares and all is using python automation tasks for many years now it has been ranked as one of the most top pro among the top programming languages okay now let's go to the very important part of this video we are going to or this course we are going to see or we are going to um, download a free software for uh, programming python so if you are somebody who is not ready to purchase a programming software for learning python you can always use this a lot of uh, softwares are available but pycharm is something which i recommend or i have used and it's comfortable to use so i would like to recommend this one pycharm by jetbrains okay so let's see how to download the community edition of this software you can download it into your computer you can use it you can learn uh, by doing programming examples so installing the free software of python which is the pycharm okay so now i am in the uh, browser i'm going to write uh, pycharm i'm going to type pycharm here and when i'm typing pycharm you can see pycharm jetbrains.com i'm going to this site here you can see pycharm and you are in the jetbrains jetbrains is the company okay pycharm is a software they have also a lot of other softwares jetbrains has now pycharm is one of the software which is mostly used for mostly or it is only used for python programming okay there is a download option click on this now you are in the in the place where you can download two versions one is the professional version don't go for this one it is a paid one or it is used for uh, by companies and all now this is the community edition and it is used for by the you know beginners and all to learn this is a free one okay so this is a free version now there is dot exe windows make sure that this is windows itself there is also other options arm 64 uh i am going to keep this as dot exe windows and then i'm going to click on download so when i click on the download you can see it is getting uh downloaded yes it is getting downloaded i have already downloaded the uh one so i'm going to my downloads yes and i'm going to the pycharm community edition click on this link and you can start executing so after downloading you can see the community edition version will be in your downloads or somewhere in your computer okay uh installed the software into the computer make sure that you keep all the extensions give check mark to all the the options given and then you can see an icon like this which is the pycharm community edition then you can click and open then the software will be opening like this okay so this much you can do for this part of the video from the next part we'll start to create files and you, we will start to do programming and everything uh, with the help of this pycharm okay so pycharm community edition is the version you have to download if you don't have any software ready for using uh, for py uh, for python programming okay yes yeah, so that's all for today's video please yeah so that's all for this part let's see in the next part of the video uh, and this course